Hey, Perry here uh, with another product review, or today is actually a comparison. I am going to compare the QSC 8.2 speakers to the QSC 10.2, and I think the differences will be fairly obvious. One is a has an 8-inch speaker, and the other has a 10-inch speaker. However, I think I can, if you're trying to decide between the two, I can give you some insight into what might be better uh, to suit your terms or for your, your purposes. So let me just uh, give you a shot of these two speakers here. So this is the, the one that's on right now is the QSC K10.2. It's got, you can see the little blue light <clears throat> that indicates that it is powered on, and um, it's been a gr I've been using this in my rehearsal space for uh, about a month now, and super happy with this speaker. Um, I had the 8.2s uh, before I had received the 10.2s. And you can see on the right side, those are the 8.2s. And um, I was happy with those speakers. Although I think when they when you turn up with a bunch of amps, um, you're going to notice that the feedback potential, if, when you're trying to get your vocals over the guitars and drums, is much greater. And uh, if you're a rock band, um, the, with loud guitars and full full acoustic drum set and bass uh, amp uh, amplified bass I think you're going to want to step up to the 10.2s um, if you're just a, an acoustic act uh, or you know uh, uh, an act that you know plays a little quieter like a, a jazz band or folk band definitely look into the 8.2s they're very um, they're very uh, capable of handling something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the settings the same on each speaker and just um, compare the two in terms of volume and sound and you can hear for yourself uh, just how a vocal, a raw vocal would sound coming through. Um, again, I think the differences will be obvious uh, since one is bigger than the other and one has more power than the other but I still think that either one could be used for a rock band application and uh, I think the 8.2s especially are would be nice for a just a band that doesn't necessarily crank all the time so here we go so what I'm gonna do is these speakers are set basically to default um, there's nothing there's nothing specific. I just turned them on and they're ready to go. Um, I didn't adjust any any parameters inside the, the, the module here. And I'm just putting the gain at zero, plugging it in, powering it on, and um, that's what we'll do over here. We'll, put the, we'll leave this gain at zero and uh, we'll just turn it on just as they come, factory preset and we'll, we'll compare the volume and the tone uh, of a vocal. Check one, two, this is the K10.2. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it's a beautiful sounding speaker. So let's um, do the same thing with the 8.2s. You can hear, uh, I hope it's coming through, but there's a lot of a low end and thump in this one. All right. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. So this one has a little less low end. Um, it sounds good. It's full. Uh, the volume is obviously a little less at zero gain. And I'm sure that's just because there's <clears throat> a little less power in it and the speaker is smaller. So 
Now I'm going to play a drum track through <clears throat> each speaker. So this is the program that I'm using right now. It's just a drum machine. It's called the Drum Machine, DM1 Drum Machine on an iPad. Just coming out stereo into the QSC TouchMix 8. Um, it's raw, there are, there's no compression, no EQ on it at all. And uh, this is what it sounds like through the K8.2s. Also, something to note in my test today is that I'm only playing it through one speaker to give try try to give as accurate of a comparison um, as I can. Um, obviously, when when you have a pair, you're gonna have more volume, more tone. But uh, for a comparison, I thought I'd just uh, compare one to one, so apples to apples kind of thing. So now we'll play the beat through the 10.2s. So again, no big surprises. The 10.2s are a little bit more fuller, have more tone than the 8.2s. Um, I think they're both really good options for small rehearsal spaces. Um, 10.2s a little bit better for, you know, rocking. I don't think you'd need the 12.2s in a small rehearsal space. Uh, the 10.2s are plenty loud, plenty good tone um, for a small rehearsal space, especially when you have a pair going. I have no problems getting my vocals up above my guitars and uh, you know we we play through uh, 4x12s and tube combos and we have an 8x10 Ampeg uh, bass amp and full acoustic uh, drums so in here you know we're the standard rock band and uh, we have absolutely no issues getting the <clears throat> 10 point twos vocals to come over our mix. The 8.2s, you can get them up there. Uh, you do have to do a little bit more tweaking with the EQ to make sure that you don't feed back over it, but you still, you can get it done. So if you're, you know, if you're looking to save a couple hundred dollars per pair, a hundred bucks per, per, yeah, a couple hundred dollars per pair, then the 8.2s is, is a great option. Um, but, uh, you know, if, you always want a little bit more headroom than you need. Um, I would recommend the 10.2s. Um, I'm hoping to get a pair of 12.2s um, to compare as well, and I'm going to use that uh, those in my bigger band share room, um, where actually I do need more volume. Um, I'm hoping to get four of those actually, so uh, in that room because that room's like a 25 by 60, so. There's definitely uh, more more space to cover in there. So look forward to that comparison and that review. But hopefully, if you're looking, uh, trying to decide between those two speakers, um, that'll give you some ideas of, of what you're going to, what you can expect once you get them back to your rehearsal space or your small venue, wherever you're going to use them. Rock on. <laughs>